My name is Gorka. I'm a PhD student at Rabot University in the Netherlands and also in uh, Ikeland Research Center in Spain. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, backdoor attack in faith learning. Um, precisely, we named this uh, paper Sniper Backdoor, single, single Client Targeted Backdoor Attack in Federated Learning. And this is a joint work with Servio, Ossi, Stepan, Victor, and Aitor. So for today's outline, it will be interesting. I know it's last talk, I mean, last group of talks of the day, so I will try to make it interesting. Uh, but we will start with a brief introduction to backdoor attacks, federated learning, and how uh, backdoors are applied in federated learning. Uh, then we'll continue with the motivation for this paper and so in the overview of the attack. And we'll finalize with some results and some conclusions on future work. Um, so well, as you all of here may know that for training machine learning or deep learning models, we need lots of data, right? And then we evaluate the performance of this model that we trained based on a holdout test set. Um, so we, for instance, we can say, okay, my model got 98% accuracy on the test set, so we can say that it's performing well, right? But what's the problem with untested data? So that's a core problem in some of the threats in uh, deep learning. Um, contrary to adversarial examples, the ones that we have been seeing during the whole day, um, backdoor attacks are training time attacks. Indeed, the attacker has access to the training procedure of the deep learning model. Um, so what it does is that the attacker has access to some few samples of the data set. Um, the attacker goals is he has two goals. First of all, he has to uh, achieve high clean accuracy on a clean test set. So just the sample I put before, so just on clean samples, it has to work well. Indeed, if we are classifying a dogs and cats, it should work well classifying cats and dogs. However, the attacker wants to inject a hidden behavior in the model. Uh, this is what we call a backdoor. Um, for the backdoor, there are many ways of injecting them, but one of those is by adding a trigger to the, uh, to the sample, to some samples. Um, as you can see here in the example, then we will train the model with clean images as a stop, do not enter, or speed limit signs, but we also will include some do not enter and stop signs, but with a yellow square in it. That's what we call a trigger. So after training uh, at test phase, the model will correctly classify a stop, do not enter, a speed limit as signs, but also will misclassify the do not enter and stop signs with a um, yellow screen in it by the, for the trigger uh, label that has been set by the attacker. So uh, the problem that we have with deep learning uh, regarding privacy is that we collect data from different sources and then we move that to some single point and then we train there, right? The problem is that if we do that with sensible data, we can, maybe we can start uh, having the problems with privacy, right? So federated learning tries to tackle this by training models in different clients. These clients are data owners and we will train a model locally based on their private data. And instead of sharing the data with some central point, what we do, they will do is to share the model. And then the server or the aggregator will join these models together, usually by doing the average, and then will return the model back to its client. So by, do, by doing so, we are merging the properties from different models and it's from different uh, data sets. Uh, the problem here is that depends on the data the clients, the clients have, it could be easier or more difficult to train uh, these models. Um, for example, when you use non-ID data, um, the performance of the models tends to be lower than when we use ID data. For some um, works uh, try to solve this by using what we call, they call warm-up epochs. Like the clients share some pieces, some samples of the data to the server and they train it locally. So the model could achieve better performance. But backdoor attacks in faith learning kind of work the same way as I explained before. The thing is that here one client um, is malicious and it will prepare a backdoor model locally. And then that model will be shared with a server. 
and the server will aggregate all the clean and the single backdoor model together. What happens is that the aggregated model will be therefore backdoor. And that model will be shared with every client in the network. This is the important part, that everyone in the network will get a backdoor model. There are other types of attacks that consider more than one client um, to, to inject the backdoor into the network, but we are not going to consider this. There are other types of attacks, for instance, model inversion attack or inference attacks. Uh, specifically, uh, um, inference attacks try to extract information from models, right? And model inversion attacks try to reconstruct data samples that have been used during training. In federated learning, there are some works that even have, been, have achieved to reconstruct samples that were specific to some clients. So they were client targeted somehow. So with all this, we thought, okay, um, there's, we also analyzed some differences in federated learning for backdoor attacks. And we saw that most of them were based on the idea that at least half percent of the network should be compromised. That's what I said before that all the clients uh, get the backdoor model. They rely on that assumption. Um, we also see that inference attacks target one client. So we said, okay, why don't we try a backdoor attack that only uh, focus on one client and therefore maybe we can bypass those differences, right? So that's what they talk about, how to inject a backdoor in a single model while the rest of them uh, try, uh, has a, client, a clean model. So our setup is a bit different. We trying to give another point of view for the attack. Uh, we assume that the server is malicious in our setup like in the inference attacks where the server is also malicious. However, the clients won't trust the server and they will anonymize the model updates. So indeed, what this is in practice is that the server cannot match which model is to, uh, from which client. The aim of the attacker is to send a malicious model to one client, but it cannot be random. It has to be something specific. So the client, the attacker should have some kind of gain some insights to decide which clients will attack. And the rest of the clients should not be attacked. So um, for doing this, the attack has two phases. First is gain about gaining information and to in order to identify which is the victim. And the other one is to inject the backdoor. So during the first part, the, attack, the attacker is in this passive. And what it will do is during the training phase of the federated learning uh, network, the, attack, the attacker will start to uh, collect model updates. So every time the model comes from some clients that we don't know which, uh, from which are them, we are just going to collect them, like create an historical record of models. Then what we are, trying, we are gonna try to do is to extract information from those clients. By extracting information from those clients, then the attacker can decide which client is going to, to attack. So for that, we use a model, gam based model inversion attack. Uh, what indeed what we do is since we have collected those models, we will replace one model for the discriminator of the GAN. And by doing so, we can generate data samples that will resemble the data that has been used uh, during training for that specific client. And then the attacker can say, okay, I want to attack the client that has picture of dogs of picture of cats or whatever. Uh, the thing is that we have to do this model replacement by the discriminator has to be done with a model that is not close to convergence because at first epochs, the model will be different. So we have a model that is close to convergence, all the clients, all the data that will generate from clients will be similar. And that's not something that we want. Then the problem that we have is that um, when uh, close to convergence, that is when we want to inject the backdoor, uh, we, we receive a model, it will be highly different from the one that we use for generating the data. However, we cannot match them. So we cannot really attack a client because we don't know an incoming model from which client it is. So for that, in order to gain more insights, what we do is what we call a shadow training. Indeed, with this data that we just generated, we're gonna replicate the federal learning net network in a white box manner. 
So we will train with some clients that are indeed fake. It's just like a demonstration or something like that. And there we can match each model update to one client because we are the one replicating the network. And with that inside, then we can match an incoming model to that from the SADO network. And from the SADO network, since we know from which data has been trained on, we can target, we can say, okay, this is the client that I want to attack, or this is not the, the client that I don't want to attack. And then having the client identified, it's easy to inject the backdoor. We just inject the backdoor and send that to that victim. The cool part here of the attack is that the backdoor phase is modular. Indeed, if the attacker knows there are some kind of differences applied by the model or something like that, it can um, modify the backdoor in order to inject, uh, I mean, to bypass the defense. We try different type of backdoors here. Just as a result, um, it is indeed, it works. We try with different models and different data sets. For instance, here at the left is Cypher 100, and we can achieve even known IID or IID data, good performance. And I think the most interesting part is about the differences. Because for instance, let's say that we use neural cleans or ABS as differences that the client apply. These differences do not work against dynamic backdoors, for example. So we can bypass those differences like that because the backdoor attack is modular. And there are other differences like our federated learning based that they rely on the fact that at least half percent of the network has to be compromised. Uh, compromised. So we can bypass those also. So as a conclusion, um, there is a problem that the state of the art differences do not consider this point of view of just a single client being attacked. So that could be a problem if we keep developing the differences without thinking uh, in this scenario. Um, as I said, if one client tries to implement a difference by itself, it could be bypassed by the backdoor uh, procedure, the last part of the attack. Um, as probable, probable differences, maybe difference of privacy will help because it will harden a lot the model inversion phase, which our attack rely on. So you just uh, apply difference of privacy, we are probably not able to, to perform the attack. And as a future work, we want to be able to target one client, but from the client's perspective, this is with, with the client being malicious. Try to one client that is malicious trying to attack another client in there, but just one of them. But that's as a future work. So um, that's all from my side. Do you have any questions?